introducing the Poet Life Podcast. Go check it out today on your favorite platforms, including iTunes, Apple Music, and the website, thepoetlife.com. Hey, 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 it's Christoph Wrights of the Poet Life Podcast. It is exciting for me, and I'm sure it will be for you, to know who we have on the show today. This is Miss Mrs. Nina Bruton. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, brother? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing awesome. You know, it's so funny. Um, we're here recording this podcast episode, and the night before, yes. we, just, we just had... What, what do we call that? A uh, panel discussion of the project that we just released. Yes. Meet yes. The artists. We wanted to have an artist introduction. Meet the artist. That is. How many have you done of of that nature? Have you done meet the artists before? You know what? Um, I'm sure that there's been some right moment, uh, but but. I'm glad that we did take the time to do that because that is something that I think does not happen enough. Yes. I will say that for sure, especially when there are people who are behind the scenes type folk, like composers like Scott and, you know, right. our producers and things like that. Uh, a lot of times their work gets lost in the sauce. <laughs> yes. So um, after the project comes out or after the record comes out. And so, um, yeah, it's definitely, uh, I'm glad that we had an opportunity to do it and get well, to know each other better because I know we don't really know each other. Yeah. And I think, I think, like you said, I think that's very important to highlight the people behind the scenes, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, and the most times the people behind the scenes are not really interested in, in, in being on camera in front of the uh, lights and things of that nature. But, you know, it, it, I think it's important for the viewer uh, and the listener to know that there are many people behind the scenes working the production. And it's not just a few people that you see on the screen. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A lot, for sure. And. To, I think that it helps because it gives us a, a, a better understanding of how a thing came to be. Sure. Like, uh, seeing that process. And I, I like documentaries and all of those types of things anyway. So I like to see the behind the scenes action. And I've always been, you know, one to read the liner notes and whatnot. Definitely. You know, it's funny. Uh, I'm sure right now a lot of people are wondering like, OK, what are they talking about? <laughs> of course. Of course. And so what we're discussing is a project that we've been working on for the past almost nine months. I can't believe it's been that long. It's 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 the length of having well birthing a child, birthing, you know, a, a, a newborn. And this project has like been our baby. Yeah. Um, we've partnered with um, an ensemble named Bridge, Bridge Voices. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're a, what are they considered? A coral. Coral. A coral, coral. Yep, a coral ensemble. I'm not into part. music. So tell you. me, yeah. So, <laughs> right. What, what kind of music is so, that? So choral music is like uh, what you might hear in traditional church. Like okay. uh, when I say traditional church, I mean like maybe uh Oh, and Catholic services, right? You think about choral ensembles or chamber uh, chamber singers, right? Um, think Gloria Dei and all of those things that we may have learned in high school, uh, in high school choir and whatnot, uh, depending on where you're from. But yeah, that's the sound. And so really formal, mostly formal. And uh, sometimes they even get down in other languages, right? That's where you're, you'll hear a lot of Latin a lot of pieces sang in Latin and French and even some Italian. So, mm. yeah. So, you know, I liken it to be like atmospheric music, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, like in the movies. Yep. Right. And you um, like one of the commenters, one of the viewers uh, from our from our Meet the Artists uh, event last night said I couldn't even I didn't even know it at first that mm -hmm. the music was on. Yeah. Because it was like so atmospheric, it was like just like a part of the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so when they called and said, "Hey, we want to work with you again," because we worked with them, I worked with them before, mm -hmm. um, as it relates to the poet life. 
and they said what they wanted to do. So we're, we're so let's let's break down what's happening, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, March, March 2020, okay. I think, around about that time, right. we got a call. The Poet Life received a call from our friends at Bridge. We worked with them before. And, and this was round about the springtime and a lot was happening in 2020. Mm -hmm. And I think COVID had already started. Hold on one second. Let me push pause. Hold on. Um, come here, babe. Give me a second. No problem. Yes, love. You look beautiful. You did your makeup? All right. I, I'll be up there in a minute, okay? I love you. <laughs> this is you should have left it in there and then just edited it if you needed to and said it just recorded the whole thing. Well, it's still recording because this so, is the poet life. It's 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 real life over here. You know <laughs> they see my shorts. <laughs> right. So okay. It was actually, probably about May then. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. I know it was one of the M marks. Yeah. Uh, there you M go. Right. Because okay. COVID kind of put everything at a standstill in March. And then uh, we were we we uh, Mark, May was when we learned about the the murder of Ahmad Arbery that had been months before in Breonna Taylor right been months before and then George Floyd was murdered at the end of at the end of May so yeah yes it was around that time twenty twenty right mm -hmm. so Bridge they are composed of uh, of our allies yeah right. And and I think last night I said um, I made mention of allies and potential allies. Mm -hmm. And I say potential allies is because a lot of uh, people of uh, um, non people of color mm -hmm. uh, will ask often, well, you know, I just don't know how to help. I don't know what to do or what to say. And and that's where potential allies come in, is because you're not necessarily you're not necessarily an um, an ally yet, and but to you step forward, yeah, it yeah. is. It, you have the heart, yeah. Um, but even in even in war, the allies are those who step up and stand with you, yeah. Right. Yeah. So so standing on the sidelines doesn't make you could be a great you could be a good person yeah you could be a great cheerleader yes so right so so <laughs> but uh bridge took it a step further and and stepped forward and say hey we want to give you all a platform one we want to um take this opportunity to listen to what you all are saying so we can learn yeah. and we have a platform and we want to provide that to you. And do you have a poet that can eloquently explain themselves as it relates to how they're feeling, um, not try to represent the entire race, mm -hmm. but simply speak from their perspective? Yeah. And I, I went down through my Rolodex of poets and and there was one name that I thought of that would be perfect for this project. Mm. In tone, in experience, in professionalism. It's people would be so amazed the list I have to check off yeah. before I call a poet. Because there are a, a a million poets. There's so many poets that are great. Yeah, for sure. But there are few that are professional, on time. Um, um, can can be diverse in their writing. Yeah. Can adapt to a certain theme mm -hmm. and not be stuck on one set of yeah. genre or or topic. That's good. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And I knew that Nina Bruton yeah. 
could go so many ways as it relates to, you know, topics and themes and subjects. And I was so right. Mm. So yeah. right. <laughs> you know, like, like exceeded my expectations. Thank you so much. And I, I remember when you told me that and, um, the pressure almost became a little too much. Like, I was sure. like oh my God. Right. right? But, but what this, what this project challenged me to do, what the feelings were there. Like you said, the feelings are there. You know, we're friends on Facebook. You, you've sure. seen my thoughts. You've seen my heart here and there, you know, algorithms that have it otherwise, but, but right. you know, we know of each other and we, you know, my voice. And so, to be able to, or to be challenged to, let me say that, to sit down and really put my thoughts about mm. my feelings about America into a way that would, um, to convey it in a way that would be received. And that is expressed concisely and is, as, uh, you know, instinctly as possible was, was definitely something that helped me grow as a writer. Mm. Like you said, a lot of times we do get caught up in, well, this is my style. This is what I do. This is what I write. And then there's other times where as a black woman and, you know, a black person in America, we have the words, we have the feelings, but there, there's so many, there's so many <laughs> that you, we become paralyzed. And honestly, sure. when you gave me a call, that's, I was trying to kind of bring my, pull myself out of that, that mm -hmm. slump that I've been in since May. I was stuck. Sure. Creatively, emotionally, I was stuck. And I've been praying, like, honestly, Lord, what in the world? <laughs> yeah. Do I do as a black woman? Right. You know, because not everyone's meant to be on the front lines out in the streets protesting. Not everyone's meant to be, you know, uh everyone, like you you mentioned the the, the analogy of war earlier, everyone has their part to play. Sure. You know, some are the Levites, some are the people who go ahead of you uh, in, 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 you know, their light bearers. Some people are uh, the actual warriors. Some people stay behind and deal with logistics. Right. Really well. And so I'm, I, I say all that to say I'm really grateful for the opportunity that you did see that light in me, that you did sure. recognize the the ability to to express this this fe these feelings for America in a way that uh would would make it plain to yeah one who who sees it yeah most definitely and and surprisingly I don't know why but at, at first my thought was uh a male figure uh but we see that so often it's it's always a yeah. man you know and then I was like hold on I have some some women poets that like really do this. Yeah. You know? And and again, right to the top of the list was Miss Nina Bruton. And so I said, let me call her real quick. I know she's working on several projects right now. Um, and I don't know how long the span of this project will be. Right. Right. So I, I don't want to, you know, monopolize her time. And well, I don't so. think that any of us knew the, how exactly at it. all. <laughs> at <laughs> all. You know what we thought was going to be, you know, two three months turned into, like you said, almost nine. But right. even in that, I feel like it was really necessary. Like it, it was the timing that this was released couldn't be more perfect. Uh, just the way everything fell together, those logistics we talk about. Um, everything came together as it as it was supposed to. I, I truly and honestly believe that. So, um, yeah, no one could have known. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think projects like that, you know, passion projects. Sometimes you just have to take the restraints off. Yeah, you know, because um, you projects like that are about timing mm -hmm. and how. Or what better way, um, or what better time to present this project than in February of the following year? Yeah, yep. It's like we you know the bang in, yeah. in, in moving forward because you know you mentioned that last night that this, the fact that we've completed the project is one thing, but this yes. is the beginning of the purpose for the project. Yes. 
Yes. Right. The name of this project, everyone listening, because you're probably still trying to figure out where we're going with it. The name of this project is America. You're beautiful. You are. You are. And there's layers to it because you can just hear the title. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. You know, but you'll be surprised when you hear it um, because there are, again, layers and tones and some attitude right? Yeah. Questions for America, statements being made about America. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to take a look at it, you can pause it right now if you like to pause this right now and go search <clears throat> America, You're Beautiful. It is on uh, Bridge's YouTube page. Their YouTube page is called Bridge, I believe. Yep. Bridge. Yes. And oh, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, do this. Go to the actual project's website. Yes. AYBfilm.com, right? So the actual, you don't have to do a search on YouTube. Uh, go right to that site, AYBfilm.com. Yes. And that is the home for it, right? So information about the poet life, information about Nina Bruton, information about the cinematographer, uh, also Bridge as well and a contact form there to where if you you know saw fit to reach out to us and say hey if, can you all do a workshop on this topic this 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 film let's do that yeah. um again so many times when you have an idea like this uh you think the project is the destination mm -hmm. once it's produced and it's out there <sighs> we did it yeah it's out there. But what did you do it for? You you right. did it to start the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. so I, I'll keep reiterating that that we're not done. This is the start of it. This is the conversation starter, and this is the continuation of the conversation. And so uh, Nina is the first person out of the the cast, if you will, um, that will be uh, presented here on the Poet Life podcast, but we'll also have the other uh, family members, you know, uh, of this project on as well. And I'm excited to have them on. So we're just starting here. Again, this is the start. And uh, I just want to offer my platform to continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so let's take it back a little bit, Nina. Um, where did poetry come in for you? Ooh, um, I think I have memories of writing like actual poems as early as eleven. I think really? I was years old. Yes, and they were the corniest little things. Those are the best ones. But they really were. I I have a book. I I literally once wrote a poem about blue magic hair grease. And so, so I remember that for those of you listening, well, for those of you listening, my, my, my moniker is bald head queen. And so that's um, her IG. That's my we'll IG. Her. Twitter. You can <laughs> find it there. And so that, you know, bald head queen is just a product of growing up in the eighties uh, with, uh, with no YouTube tutorials with a single father who didn't know what to do with my hair. And so, you know, in the 80s, blue magic hair grease, you know, the blue, big blue jar was I the thing. And then as I got a little older and started kind of learning how to do my hair myself, I remember I started like reading in essence that, you know, blue magic was petroleum's no good for your skin and for your hair and things or whatever. And so um, that was one of the first poems I remember writing and was like, oh, but, if it, you know, it, I was just declaring my undying love for blue magic hair grease because it's you know, the simplest thing that worked for me. Sure. Uh, it, but, um, but I'd have to think in them from there, as I got a little older into, you know, my little relationships and things, I started unpacking my, my actual feelings and, um, and feelings around how I, um, f feel about myself in one of the, in my book, uh, Heart of a Queen Poetry and Prose from the Soul. I actually, this was released back in 2013, but, uh, there's a poem in here from 1992 when I was 13 and I, mm. and it's, it's 
saying, you know, I don't know what it is that makes me so beautiful, but I see it. You know, it may be there once a week or every day for a whole week, but I see it. It comes, it goes, it changes with the weather. Sure. I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel better. Like, sure. and so these yeah. are things that, you know, I found early that I could express my my feelings about myself and about the world through writing. Wow. Yeah. What grade is that? 11? Uh, 11 is sixth grade. So somewhere in middle school, 13, I was in eighth grade when I finally wrote that. Yep. Do yeah. you... Do you know what led you to write? It, were you a, a loner? Were you were you um, a, an introvert? Or <laughs> no, I've always been somewhat of an extrovert. Okay, but I, but I've been. I'm from Wichita, Kansas. So okay. okay, born and raised. And as you can imagine, there's not a whole lot of black folks in Wichita, Kansas. Well, there are plenty of us. Let me say this: there were plenty, but for our, the size of our town, but the feelings that I had around my blackness, I didn't have anyone to help really cultivate that. Even with a black father, my mother was biracial, um, but mm. leaned toward her white side. She was more comfortable as she got older being, you know, white. Um, and so there was really, you know, there, there, I grew up around in, in quote unquote the hood, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's gang violence, there's drugs, there's the whole shebang. And in poverty with my in mom. Wichita, Kansas. In Wichita, Kansas. Every, the world is a ghetto. You might be the, the first person that, <laughs> that I know that is yeah. from Wichita or just from Kansas. Yeah, you said what? You might be the first person that I yeah. know that is from Kansas. I normally am. Shout out to Janelle Monet. She's also from Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. So there's a, we're here and there, you know, and of course there's Gordon Parks, the 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 legendary Gordon Parks is from Scott Scott City, Kansas, or Fort Scott, Kansas, I should say. Mm. So um, but yeah, in all the things that I was growing up in, um, I've always been different. In that, I guess this, um, you know, I I I love Teen Summit on on BET. You know, I, I that was the thing that I had to make sure my chores were done before. Yes. You know, before I on Saturday mornings, before I could get in front of the television, so I could sit down and watch it. So I've always been, I've always had this desire to really understand my blackness and my place in the world as a black person. Mm. Um, and so. You know, my friends started calling me, you know, like Mother Africa joking when we were in, you know, middle middle and high school. Oh, there go Mother Africa. Here <laughs> and then from there, Queen Nina. And then it it here we are now, you know, in cyberspace as the bald head queen. But I've always, you know, I always had a book. So if I'm at track meets or you know, somewhere, I would go off somewhere and and have a book instead of you know, just dealing with normal random teenage things you know when we have time so sure I, I did plenty of that too please do not think i didn't but <laughs> the reading was there the reading really? was there. The, uh, the the my world was opened up to uh new worlds and new experiences again through television through magazines the jet magazine we get at the house and, mm -hmm. and the books that i enjoy reading so it 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 didn't I don't know how I didn't turn out to be a writer with all the reading wow. that I did, right? You put it right. in, it's gotta come out. <laughs> right. Yeah, most definitely, for sure. It it writing is uh a form of expression and like you said, what you put in comes out. And so what better way to reproduce what you put in mm -hmm. than to write? Yeah. You know, and so what did you start doing with your writing, though? Were you just writing for a time or were you called upon to yeah. write this for school, this play, this, right? As you're really causing me to have to go unpack some things. Mm, um, let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little while, but no. Um yeah, I guess for the for I think through middle school I kept it in, you know, my little journal or whatever. And I think that maybe at the beginning of yeah, at the beginning of high school. I think by then I started like being called upon for black history mm -hmm. programs. Right. And um and I was singing. I also I am also a singer. So I was singing in choir and things like that. Um spoken word wasn't a thing. Yet. Right. It, particularly in Kansas in the early 90s. 
as you can imagine, because uh, culturally, right, uh, we like. Right. But I remember reciting, you know, some Nikki Giovanni, reciting uh, Langston Hughes during mm. these programs. And so it wasn't, I didn't start out with my, sharing my own work. It wasn't until, that wasn't until later in high school that I, I even realized that no, spoken word is a thing that I can perform the, um, the words that I put on paper. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, I think that's how, how it began was with those Black History Month uh, programs. And then I did meet Gordon Parks. He came to our, our city and I think I saw it like randomly saw it in the newspaper. I don't even know. <laughs> Wow. I came to know, but we got the newspaper at the house when at that time my mother was getting it in. And I saw, and I'm a freshman in high school and was like, I got to be there. I don't know how. It's in the middle of the day. So I asked my mother if I could catch the city bus. I went to her with a plan. Look, this is the, wow. bus. Here are the buses I need to take. I need to get downtown. It's like at two in the afternoon. She excused me from school and I went and I saw Gordon Parks and he signed my my journal keep writing love and i've been writing <laughs> wow wow that is now that if that isn't motivation and yeah. inspiration to continue to write i don't know what is that's awesome that's awesome okay so round up you said that was freshman in high school yep early 94 93 94 somewhere around there yep i was a okay so did you go even harder with your writing or? Well, um, I, I will say that I didn't really, really, I still wrote, yes, but it was always in a book and kind of kept quiet, right? Okay. Because there aren't, at this time, there aren't open mics <clears throat> for me to go to. And, you know, people aren't having those types of events, um, especially for young people. It wasn't, you know, yes. the work you're doing now with young people. Um, I didn't have that when I was right. growing up at all. And so my work stayed in my books until um, I had been about <laughs> had been about 19. And I'm chuckling thinking about my first first experience. Um, <laughs> uh oh. Like and it was at a little bar in downtown Wichita. And uh, my boyfriend at the time was a musician, and so he was a saxophonist and pianists and things so there was a there's a piece i wrote called play brother play which is also in this book and so he you know accompanied me and it was a whole thing you know wow. by now uh i'm kind of seeing i don't think yeah love jones had come out at this point you know it had been out for a few years now and it opened my eyes to this world of of, of spoken word and poetry in a in a new way mm -hmm. so that's when i started trying to you know creep my way out and, and get on the mic here and there Shortly thereafter, I actually joined the Air Force. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I actually joined the Air Force. And uh, that was, we had, fa now we fast forwarded to 2000. Right. Out of high school. Uh, and I joined the military. And um, it was when I got stationed here in Virginia, in the Tidewater area of Virginia, um, when I really started in, uh, attending open mics and... Fuzzy Wednesdays was the first one. Mm. Oh, you went to Norfolk State, so you may recognize some. I'm familiar, yes. <laughs> you may recognize some of these names. So Fuzzy Wednesdays was going down every Wednesday, and like somebody randomly came by my dorm room on base and was like, hey, you look like this random dude. He was like, you look like you might like some poetry and all that mess, right? This is where we were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, let's do it. So I hop in a car that evening with this dude robert is i know and you know came to know him right very well but um and we went over around about a mile away from base and i mean i've been in it ever since and wow. from there from fuzzy wednesdays to urban safari down in norfolk to divine tectonics over at norfolk state and just all these different open mics all up and down the coast but let me tell you what happened christoph Somewhere along the line, I'm with these giants. I'm working with Queen Sheba. I'm with Talam AC. I mean, these, 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 these big time poets, these, the poem sees these brothers up on deaf poetry. Now deaf poetry jam is right. popping in. And I started shrinking myself, shrinking myself mm -hmm. and shrinking because I was like, I'm not good like them. Mm -hmm. I was still in the military, so I couldn't pursue 
you know, the, 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 you know, the careers like John Good and other, you know, uh, professional writers had because I, you know, got to pack up and go put on my gas mask and exercise for a you know? <laughs> Right. <laughs> but you so, know what? Not to cut you off. No, go but ahead. Those are the best rooms to be in when you feel like, okay, before I stepped into this room, I was the yeah. name to know. Hmm. Right. And everybody came to me for the poetry, for the yeah. performance. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh my God. Wow. You yeah. know, but that's how you grow. That is the only way you grow. Yeah. You're right. You know, unfortunately, and I can say this about myself, and I even have a piece that I published called Giants and Grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. Because you know, and it speaks to the fact that it starts out, that, you know, I, I grew up on the scene, a, a baby sister to the, the greats. Like, you know, they're older than me. These people are blacker than me. They're more educated than me. Mm -hmm. you know, they have degrees and they have, they studied writing. And then for all these reasons, I allowed myself to, to just shrink as a writer and started kind of keeping them, keeping things here. And so it's honestly been quite a journey as a writer, just again, finding my voice, finding the confidence, you know, sometimes we'll work with people that we think is a divine connection. And you find that somewhere in the process, your, your voice has been lost, you know, through editing, through self editing, through mm. literal editing of my first book that kind of left me discouraged. And so here all these years and all this experience I have as a writer and as a poet, and I'm over here hiding. Wow. So, you know, I, we knew this would be a conversation, so I'm going to keep it all the way 100. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, no, the people need to hear it because they're yeah. feeling the same way. They're probably in it right now. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah know? Well, not everyone's meant, well, not everyone's meant for the stage. If if I, I personally enjoy performing, I love mm -hmm, performing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I love being on stage. I love making everyone in the room feel like the most important person in the room, mm -hmm. right? Like I like I'm speaking directly to their heart. I in whatever I'm doing. Yes. And so to to find yourself, you know, in fear or doubting your talents, even for whatever reason, I really hope whoever ever listens to this ever that mm -hmm. you 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 find ways in in a, a a village a tribe that can and camp around you and really lift you up in your work in yes your, in your desires and in your purpose yeah but that's the best part about poetry mm -hmm. it is not you know monolithic it, it's not just one way to do it yeah. you know i love writing i love writing page poems mm -hmm. i love writing spoken word poems but i'm not interested in the stage yeah I'm just not, you know, and uh, my father told me when I was younger, because I was frustrated, I was like, man, I really like poetry, but I don't like performing, mm -hmm. you know, so how can I still get my work out? Mm. And he was just like, why don't you partner with people who love being on stage? I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. I, okay. I never thought of that or thought like that. You know, and then I started to partner with people who love being on stage and acting and all of that. And I started creating poetic productions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because if you think about it, playwrights, they're not in the plays most times. Right. Songwriters, they can't sing most times. Right. They right. So, yeah, what? Absolutely. yes. Yes. I was like, man, I felt so free at that time. Good. You know, Good. so so I was really excited about it. So, so, all right. So you alluded to your your book journey, right? And and you getting discouraged. Tell me about the, your first book. <sighs> so my first book is called Dramas of a Bald Head Queen. Because nice. The, okay. <laughs> dramas being a series of conflicting events or forces. That's all okay. that life is, right? That's right. It, right or wrong, heaven or hell. Do I grow my hair out? Do I not? You know, mm. do I take the treatment? Do I not? Whatever. It's all a drama. But, and then of course the bald head queen, because again, as I mentioned earlier, growing up, um, I was teased relentlessly about how, you know, my hair looked like Don King and how I look like, you know, a, a buckwheat. I mean, I caught it growing up, caught it. And God mm. bless my father did what he, 
new to do. And I'm amazed I still have ears because he done he done burnt me all up. <laughs> uh, but and actually in my podcast, I do have a podcast conversations with the ball head queen and I in there and in the book, I explain my my issues with self-image. And ultimately that's what it was. While a lot of times people will just look at, you know, black women in particular, and like it's just hair, what's the big deal? Well, when you have adults and children teasing you both alike teasing teasing you about your the way you look right it's impactful i mean i literally remember looking in the mirror like i think i'm pretty like what is the problem you know right right what are these people not seeing and this is as a child not even like in middle school like in in elementary school in fourth fifth grade i'm like what is the problem Mm. but you know it just and, and then there's trauma attached to that because I had my first, I was getting relaxers by the time I was in kindergarten. My Uh kindergarten picture is literally, I had to have all my hair cut off because it had been so fried and damaged because my, no one knew what to do with my hair. Mm. It's terrible. And so that is the, 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 the name of the book and where we get started in dramas. And so from there, I just tell my story about how I did overcome and find myself standing in confidence and boldness in my own skin. And, you know, even the, the, my relationship with my mother, again, who had her mental health issues, my father, who was an alcoholic and a womanizer growing up and, you know, mm-hmm. my own um, <clears throat> time in the game, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, <laughs> right. It tells a lot, but during the, pr- the, the, the process of publishing, I linked up with a brother who, I admired as an intellectual writer, Mm -hmm. great writer, you know, kind of highbrow, real fancy, you know, so I thought he'd be the perfect editor. Unfortunately, because he's that highbrow writer, he's very to buy the book as far as grammar is concerned and sentences and you use too many ellipses and all of these things and so on and so forth. And so during the editing process, it wasn't until after I published because he edited. I immediately went rushing the process. Okay. Because right. sometimes we're like, oh, I set this date. I can't move it. You can move the date. Okay. <laughs> Whether it be right, then rush. Right. I know. Right. That now. But I went ahead and, and, and went straight to press without following up behind him and reading it again because mm. I trusted him more than I trusted my own voice. Wow. And so it must have been a couple of months after the book was released and I was doing, you know, readings here and there or, or just starting to do re- readings. And I was at a church and reading the book and was stumbling over the words, like literally stumbling over my words. And it occurred to me, like, I don't sound like this. I don't. I literally my voice was just stripped. I wouldn't say that line like that. Like, that's not how I wrote it. But again, in my haste, I didn't go back in and edit to say, no, I said X, Y, and Z, not- I said what I said. I said what I said. (laughs) And so unfortunately, instead of immediately going back in and pressing in and like, you know, rewriting and republishing, I backed away from the whole thing. Mm. Like there was so much shame that came on me and guilt, Mm. right? Like I had this baby, I had this vision and I let it just kind of be- and now people love the book. They love the story. Someone bought it the other day. And I was like, ah, wait, I'm, re- I'm working to rewrite it right now. Like, please. And she was like, no, it was great. Don't ever hide. And I was like, okay, you're right. And but even right. in writing books like Napoleon Hill, mm-hmm. he up, well, he's no longer here, right. but his book is, um, is updated yearly, annually. Mm-hmm. Um, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. Right? And so even with the book that you currently have, you can you can add a sequel to it yeah. or even just update it with new life. Yeah. And your voice. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that is what we're working on right now. Nice. So nice. here it is. It'll be a new, this is the old version, but it's, it's going to be. You look like Nina Simone. This. This um was actually a uh it was inspired by Diana Ross. There's an album cover. And I will take that Nina Simone this as well. Um but yeah, it was inspired by a Diana Ross record and um my memoir. It's a beautiful story. 
It really is. My life is a comedy, if nothing else. If where, nothing can, else. where can people find your book? You can find a book on Amazon.com. Right now, that is the only place. Well, and Barnes and Noble and other other dot coms and things. Um, mm -hmm. I do not have them directly. I for sale myself. Uh, we can work it out if you want it from me specifically. But yeah, please, you can visit Amazon.com. Look up Nina C. Bruton, and you'll find me there. Okay. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. <clears throat> All right. So, roundabout time. What is this? College now? We're talking about. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Pre. Pre books yes yeah okay so how did you figure out that or when did you figure out that this was an actual career mm. possibility i i always wanted i always considered myself a writer like even in high school i remember my mother would tell people and i even talk about that in dramas how my daughter is going to be a writer she's a writer she's going to be a writer like, because that's all I talked about. Like, I think for my 16th birthday, all I wanted, we didn't have computers were way too expensive then. But so I asked for an electronic typewriter. Like, can I just get an electric, an, an electric typewriter? Right. Right. Uh, I don't ask for much. And I did. I got it. And, and that is so funny. And I, I typed and uh, wrote again, still in my journals and things. And so it's always been there, but again, I didn't, I, there was no one to direct me and say, this is the way a writer should go. You know what I'm saying? Like, unfortunately, people in my generation were often encouraged to go get a job, right? Mm -hmm. Or go to school, go get a job and ride it till the wheels fall off. Like mm -hmm. retire and, you know, go get a good job, especially in a smaller city like Wichita, where we build aircraft. That's where Boeing, Learjet, Cessna, that's where all of those hubs are. We build aircrafts. And so I even remember my father, you know, like, sweetheart, you know, you should really just go get you a good job. Right. <laughs> right. And I'm like trying to find my way creatively. And it was non-existent. That community was non-existent to me. Yes. And, um, I dropped out of college and because I was working full time, I was going to school full time. Sister was tired. I was shacked up, engaged, the whole shebang. I was living an adult life with childlike experience. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it exhausted me. And that is when I actually uh, took a pivot and joined Air Force. So, mm. Yeah. But the, wow. writing, the desire to be a writer and a journalist back then um, was uh, all that I wanted to do. All. Okay. What was your role in the in, in the military? In the Air Administrative Force? support. Okay. Admin okay. support. So we worked in a in an aircraft maintenance squadron. Our 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 people maintained our jets, F 15s, F A 22s, and we handled their paperwork. You need to get paid, you need to get promoted, you need right. a medical, you know, right. medical schedule and all that. So we were the we were the oil of the operation. <laughs> and, and was that considered like HR? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Ultimately, okay. that's what it is. Yep. Okay. 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 So was that <laughs> able to translate uh, when you came out? It should have. And you know what? It did. And I did some of those jobs as well. Um, that's so funny. I separated from the Air Force in 2005. Okay. Um, after, so I only did five years. I enlisted okay. for four, extended for one. And um, it's amazing to look at because I had a whole plan. I had a plan for when I got out. I wanted to work with youth. Basically, what I do now is what I wanted to do then. But what happened is there was this, this short fellow. He was really cute. And I got all caught up. And sister needed a job job. Like, the plan mm. that I had in place, I allowed myself. It's all in dramas. It's all in dramas. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'll do, go ahead. It's a quick read. You can read it, like, in one day. But no, um, I just got distracted from the plan. And then mm. by the time I realized, oh my God, I'm so far off course, I had bills to pay. So from there, I spent years just trying to get any job, right? To kind of, to, to help me get out of this, this rut, this financial rut that I've been in. So. Mm. Awesome. Well, yeah, no. If you get a plan, go with it, please. Follow the plan. Right. Right. Yeah. No, uh, stick with your plan. You know, even if you have to make some changes and yeah. some pivots, you know, at the very least have a plan. 
at the very least, right? At the yeah. very least. Yeah. Yeah. So so where are you now? Where are you now in your writing career? Hmm. Now in my writing career, I am um again rewriting dramas, currently in the process of doing that and looking to re-release this summer. And I mean, we've got time, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I found myself um just now really getting into a place where after the release of dramas and this has been ongoing uh you know where i've been kind of pulling myself out of this this funk that i had been right. in after its release and this, this this season of discouragement you know i mean i it's so amazing the ways we will talk ourselves out of our purpose most, most definitely you know because our voice was lost or because and and this is why i always say a, a mind filled with shame cannot learn. Mm. I've heard this quote and I will re- I will repeat this quote as often as I possibly can for myself and for those that may ever hear it. Because what, and this is how, and not to get too churchy on you, but this is where the enemy tries to uh, uh, over overtake us. And we're darkness, speaking of being light, right? We be the light. We're darkness will try to consume us and keep us from shining in the world in the ways that mm-hmm. we've been purposed to do so. Mm-hmm. Right. So I didn't trust my writing. I didn't trust my voice. I didn't trust that I was smart enough. Right. Because now I've done all of this and been all these places, but I have no degrees. No one will want to hear from me. No Mm. one will want to listen to me. They don't want me teaching their children. I mean, I just got into this, this cycle of telling myself all these lies. Wow. And so even my daily journaling, I found I wasn't doing because I was afraid of what might come out on the page. Wow. What, what truths I will have to unpack, right? What work I would have to do to get myself to, to recognize the how the, the shame and the guilt was placed there. But I'm I'm glad to say again mm. the this project and the ones that have come even after it that I've been working on subsequently uh or, or simultaneously, pardon me, have really uh reignited my love for writing all over again. Wow. Wow. And in, the, and in that time, you didn't realize that th- those are the best stories. Yeah. yeah. And the most impactful, not just inter- entertaining, but yeah. the most imp- impactful because people can relate. Yeah. Because you're not the only one. And that's the thing that I think a lot of we need to get over is thinking we're the only one. You know, I I have recently found myself back in writers groups. Nice. So writers, writers, even though it's something you do in solitude, you must find community. Sure. You must find community to to connect with and to because you're not the only one. You're not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's too many people. <laughs> it's it's just too many. Yeah. It, it doesn't work out that way, you know? Yeah. 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 So <sighs> this is exciting, man. This is exciting to get the backstory behind <laughs> Nina Bruton. And I just really want so many people, one, to check you out, all of the work that you've been able to do, you know, go get her books. Um, but right now, go watch that film. It is what, seven to eight minutes? And not even that. We've got about 6.55. Yeah. Right, That's right. Like seven minutes. Yeah. And when we were having the Meet the Artist, I think it was Gilbert's mom who commented and said, um, have you all thought about um, uh, submitting the film to a festival or? Yeah. So anybody listening, you know, watching, yeah. even reading the blog, if you all are uh, familiar with any festivals that we can submit, submit a spoken word film, please let us know. And and because I'm going to be doing my research as well, because I think the work is that good. Honestly. Right. The conversation is that needed. For right. Sure. And so I think um, I think this is the perfect opportunity and perfect tool to present to a larger art audience and not just our small networks and yeah. say, hey, we did a project. Yep. You know, yeah, definitely. Well, so what's what's new for you? What's what's coming up? I know you said something that you're working on. Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, I have a 
few, one, one, I'm a host. I love hosting events. So that is awesome. one of the things that if uh, virtual events, uh, I have a one coming up at the end of this month, at the end of March, we're in March okay. now. Uh, okay. Wow. Happy March. I know, right? <laughs> um, Women, Women's History Month? It is Women's History Month. Yes. And so we will be, uh, there's a, a, a retreat, an online retreat, virtualized, I guess, um, called Live Your More that I will be uh, the keynote speaker at nice. and later this month. And you can, you'll can you be able to find all this information at webethelight.com. In addition to that, I'll be, I'm currently working on a piece um, around the Declaration of Independence to present for a Juneteenth. And so, at a, right. <laughs> and I, I'll, I won't even this was good about. practice. It was good practice. And let me tell you how I almost talked myself out of the. Like, why would I not capitalize on the conversations I'm having right now about my beloved America mm -hmm. and then next take on the Declaration of Independence? Because lies, steal, kill and destroy. That's all that, you know, yeah. <laughs> certain somebody's out here to do. No. Is it is it imposter syndrome? <sighs> It is, it is, it is a lot of that. It is learning to show up as my authentic self. I think it's what's really important. And uh, so, yeah, I think it is like, oh, I, I'm not the one to be able to, to really carry this conversation. I'm not the one, but why not? Why not you? Hmm. If you have an idea, if, if you've been given a vision, I have one of my aunties and mentors told me when you have an idea, act on it in 48 hours. Yes. Whether, whether that doesn't mean you got to complete the thing, but act on Start. it. Start, research it, you know, just unpack the idea, write it down, start to, you know, take a look at what the idea is and then how you can move forward in the thing and lean into it. And so um, that is one of the greatest lessons that I've learned in the past year, pardon me. Yeah, it, it reduces the time. Yeah that you give yourself to talk yourself out of talk it. yourself out of it yep. yeah 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 it is it's the analysis paralysis <laughs> mm. you know yeah yeah it is very real yeah it, it you know i real. i want to start vlogging with the v your video mm -hmm. logging in and and i you know I'll do a video and I'm like, okay, all right. And then I won't do one for another week and two weeks. And, and I'm like, and I'm like, like, who am I to even, yeah. who, who cares? Like, you know, it's, it's, it's. That's it's, exactly where I am. I feel you. Yeah. It's all right there. If, the, if it's there, if the idea is there, do it. Cause do you it. know, I, I, sometimes I feel real weird. Like almost, almost, um egotistical to be like this yeah yeah same oh my gosh yeah you know yeah it is so crazy because i'm in a group of uh influence called Bo this the sister named maddie james has a group called boss fluence boss fluence and so the idea is that she's an influencer and so she okay. basically she taps in and helps people tap in and learn how to live life as an influencer and whatever they do and i'm like i don't want to be no influencer or, you know, sell people things, you know, my favorite, but we all have a level of influence. Yes. Right. We all have some level of influence. And so learning how my <laughs> life influence my world is what's key. And then in learning that make get gaining clarity on that, I'm finding then showing up consistently. Right. You know, is where now, I am also overcoming the uh, taking photos of myself and taking videos because that's one of the things like right. the content, content for content creators. We got to be content creators. And I'm like, but I don't yeah. want to put together five different outfits and batch, <laughs> you know, content or whatever. Right. But um, it's, it is, I think what it's going to take is us really accepting that this is the culture that we're, that we're a part of. Right. You know, I think my dilemma is, I don't want the poet life to be about me. Understood. You know, and, and and so that's the struggle for me. You know, I'm doing this podcast because I'm bringing guests on. Yeah. To talk about them. Yeah. You, you see it's what I'm saying? Not, and so, but what you can do is, I, 
I wish I could really get you to understand how I feel you. <laughs> yeah. But I think what we have to do is because it's one, we know our heart's intentions, honestly. Right. And so what we cannot do, and I'm and I'm in the process of getting over this, what we cannot do is assume what people might think about I the, know. Work, the work we do. I like, know. I was writing in my journal this morning, like, when did I start caring what people think? Like, you have to not care. Of all the I don't give a hoots that I've ever given, why do I care now what people think? <laughs> When did I become this person? <laughs> you know what it is? I think I think it's because sometimes when I see it, mm-hmm. I sometimes get judgmental about others. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Look at that. Look at that light shining on your own. You know what I mean? I had to I had to flip it <laughs> and figure out what it was. And I'm and, and sometimes I'm like, oh, why are you taking selfies in the bathroom? Why, 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 why? You know, and so the light is best in the bathroom. Bathrooms have the best lighting, just so we're clear. I've never been a selfie person. Only if it my if my wife's in the picture and I'll right. you know I'll be like this or my kids or whatever. But I'll never like do this for me. Like it's the I, culture we're in, and if one <laughs> is totally acceptable. Okay? It is as long as you're not blocking traffic or some foolishness. It's okay. Or walk into traffic. Oh, or, or walk in it safety first, please, people. Safety first. Yeah, I, I'm getting used to this. I'm getting used to it, you know, because I'll I'll get I'll watch YouTube videos of vloggers and I'm yeah. like, I can do that. I can I'll, I can do that. <laughs> and then get down the streets and be shook. Uh, <laughs> I have literally driven to locations and 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 driven away. <laughs> like I've sat in the car, I've stalled, and then like, oh the sun's going down. I can't right. now. But you know, I've started, I've started. Uh, with this actual project, though, yeah, I started the morning of yep. uh, our recording, yep. like on the way there, and um, it comes out really good, though. It's great, <laughs> you know. It's good. So we have what we need, brother. We have. I know. We, we just got to do it. We just you know. Do it. I um one of the things that Instagram. <sighs> likes to do is they're always changing things and so like my story views have gone down where i used to get like three four hundred views now i literally have like 24 37 like some random number and so what i've learned is since they've released reels now they're trying to push people toward reels i see yeah and so the more active and this is what reels are 30 seconds right yep yep so the idea is you got to be get in there and get it done i think it's like yeah i think it is 30 seconds and they give you more attention to the reels. And then, yep. So the more consistent you are in reels, and then it's so insane. And I don't know what their purpose is, but it's definitely challenging me to grow in this thing because just today, I t- one of my girlfriends is holding me accountable. Um, just today, I posted real day one, and my goal is to do a reel every day, thirty seconds. I'm on the phone anyway. The right. phone is in my face. 30 seconds, morning light, good morning. All right. Just wanted to give you some light today. Da, 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 da. Remind you to go be light in the world. Boom. Easy peasy. So we'll talk. You know, about the big picture for me, I think, I think it is, I think it is stepping into your greatness. Absolutely. That's 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 really what it is. Mm, you have to get outside of you're thinking of you're not that important. Yeah, but you are. When a, when a lot of people believe that you are. Yeah, and you just are. Wow. If you're here, if you are here on this earth, you are important, period. Yes. How you show up and how you're important and how, that, how your life is used may not look like, and I think that that's, as a poet, this is where I really struggled because I, my life wasn't my poet life. The idea of what Mm. my poet life was, was, you know, deaf poetry jam and doing traveling and doing, because again, I was still in the military. So my experience in that was limited. The open mics were all I knew. Mm. So when 
my life didn't show up that way. My poet life didn't didn't show up the way I expected it to. I was like, oh, well, maybe I'm not supposed to do any of that at all and stepped away from it altogether. I see. Find yes. your way. Find your, you know, it's so crazy. Some of the ideas that I'm just now acting on, I had years ago. Yeah. Yep. And discouraged for what? Because I'm not as good as, you know, Rob Hill Sr. or Alex L. or any of the other, you know, people who do what I do, who speak my language. Do not be intimidated by other people. You cannot. There are people who've never heard of those people, but they follow you. Wow. That is good. You are, if you're not encouraging anyone else, you're encouraging myself. I promise you. And and it, it really takes you to challenge yourself. Yeah. To step outside. That's what it is. The comfort it. zone. It's the yeah, comfort zone. zone. Yeah. That comfort zone will have you Up. in the oh, danger yeah. zone. Yeah. Really. Yes. Yes. I, I I really appreciate your time, Nina. Um, your, your professionalism. I'll keep saying that I, I was so just so proud because you're a representation of me and my company mm -hmm. and to just be able to kind of hand it over to you, you know, and some of the meetings I weren't there, but I knew all was well. You know, I wouldn't get a call to say, yeah, your poet didn't show up. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, listen, I've had that call several times, you Much know. Heart. Yes. My, yeah. name, my name may not be worth much, but it's mine. Listen, <laughs> listen, you've listen, you've raised your value, at least in my eyes. I promise you. So so right. we'll be doing some some work in the near future, um, even within this project. Yeah. Right. And so we want to let everybody know, um, again, go watch it. Go watch it. If you're in a place where uh, you have resources or contacts that will um, afford us the, uh, the the ability to do workshops, uh, we're Nina's in the process of putting together a curriculum for yeah. this actual project. Yes. Right. Yes. And and again, like we said, this is only the beginning. Mm -hmm. We didn't just put a project out just to say we put a project out. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so so please reach out to us. Um, the poet life dot com. Mm -hmm. We be the light dot com. Yeah. And the film's website, a Y B film dot com. It is amazing. It is an amazing project. And I think you will feel the same way prayerfully. Mm -hmm. um, but it is the Poet Life, Poet Life podcast and Nina Bruton. If you could leave anything, what would you leave with the folks, with the people? Of course, I just always want to encourage people to, to find the light in their own life and mm -hmm. then step up and be the light in your world. Uh, honestly, it doesn't take, we, so many of us get paralyzed with, uh, changing the world because all of its ills and all the darkness seems so vast, but just start with shining light in your mm, three foot radius, just wherever mm -hmm. you are, be light and, uh, we'll change the world one step at a time. I promise. Awesome. Awesome. Everybody go challenge yourself to step outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, for sure. I promise you I'm going to do it. So go to the poet life. Uh, on IG yeah. and and go to bald head queen on IG. You're going to start seeing a step outside of our comfort zone. So I'm putting ourselves out there and, and you'll start seeing me vlog more. I vlog just a little bit, but I'm going to challenge myself to do more. Yeah. Nina's going to do the same and we challenge you to do the same as well. It's the poet life podcast. Thank you all. We appreciate you. We're out. Introducing the Poet Life Podcast. Go check it out today on your favorite platforms, including iTunes, Apple Music, and the website, thepoetlife.com. Find a way, find a way. Ain't got no time now.